About four or five years ago, I wrote an article on Atomic Trim and posted a video about how to make small metal boxes out of drink cans. That turned out to be one of the most popular videos on my channel and by far the most popular page on my website. I'm going to take a little bit of time now to answer some of the questions that you've asked me about drink can tin work. The first question is, what equipment do I need? Well you can actually do drink can tin work with some quite simple tools. To start with you do need a can. You need an aluminium can and you can test the can you've got by using a magnet. If it sticks you have a steel can and you can't really use that but if it doesn't stick you have an aluminium can and so that's what you'll need. I work on a cork backed placemat which, which I find has just the right resilience and give to be able to emboss the metal using a ballpoint pen. The pen I have here has got a nice fat rounded tip which I find embosses the metal without tearing it. You'll also need some nice sharp scissors and a straight edge and really that's about it. Next question, are the jagged metal edges dangerous? Well they certainly can be. It's easy to find that when you're cutting the metal you end up with pieces sticking out like this which are pointy and sharp and you can easily catch your fingers on that. I wouldn't call this an activity for unsupervised young children but with a little bit of care you can minimize the risk. One way you can do that is by observing which way your scissors close. So this part here, here is on the left so I can make sure that when I cut round the can I cut it like that and any jagged sharp pieces are left on the piece I'm cutting rather than the piece I'm cutting away. So yes there are risks but all it takes is a little bit of care. Next, do you really need to sand the paint off? Well it's not strictly necessary to sand the paint off the can but let me show you what happens if you don't. When you're working on the design on the can, if you've left the paint on there it can be quite easy to just lose sight of where your design is and actually end up making mistakes. So if I was going to put some little details into there what's actually happened there is I've gone off track a little bit because all of this paint on the can here is just a bit confusing and I've lost sight of my design. Whereas if you've sanded the paint off the can it's a lot easier to see exactly where you're going and keep track of your design. So as I say not strictly necessary to sand the paint off the can but I do find it helps especially if you're doing complex designs. Next, can the end result be painted or decorated? Yes, certainly it can. I think you'd probably find that nail varnish would adhere quite well to this metal or um, enamel paint or something like that. But another way you can do it is just with boot polish. And if you just rub a little boot polish onto your can, you can create a sort of antique effect. Just leave that on there for a few minutes and then buff away. Next question, what are those measurements again? Well it depends on the size of the metal that you have available. For the standard box that I made it was a two inch central square. Each of the side pieces were one inch deep and the little tabs at the edges it doesn't really matter whatever's left over. But obviously you can adjust that to fit whatever size of metal you've got. If you have a very tall can you may be able to get a larger box out of it. If you want to make boxes that fit inside one another so you can use one as a lid I recommend making the top square just about a quarter of an inch smaller on the piece that's to fit inside. Next question, what do you call the pattern on these boxes? Well, in all honesty, I just doodled it. I'm a bit of a doodler and so I just drew it freehand and filled it in with whatever I thought was going to look good. So I went for a combination of sort of swirly designs and some geometric shapes and just some dots and spirals you can really fill in with whatever shapes take your fancy. I do recommend that you practice on a spare piece of metal first and just find out what designs you really like. It's not difficult just to mock up the designs that you like best. Have a play, just experiment and see what you really like. Next question, can you explain the double sided bit again? Okay, what we want to try to achieve is a design that really stands out from the background. 
and you will find that on your first pass of embossing it, it doesn't look very striking. Let's just so let's just do one now. I will do a small spiral. So there we go. And on the first go around, you end up with it's embossed on there, but it doesn't look tremendously impressive. It's pushed the metal out a little bit. So what I do, I've already made the spiral on that side. I now go now go back to this side and I just use the pen to press down the metal just next to the embossed line. And then I do the same on the other side of the embossed line. And that just pushes it back down. But obviously this has now flattened the design. So that I then turn over again and retrace the initial design there. And what that does, that causes the embossed design to stand out in sharper relief against the background. Let's just have a look at that on a diagram. So on the first pass, the pen creates a shallow dent in the metal. We then flip the metal over and pass the pen down either side of the raised bump. That presses the metal back down. We then flip the piece over one more time and retrace the original design. And what we're left with is an embossed mark that stands out in greater relief against the background. Next question, are other shapes and designs possible? Oh yes, definitely. If you look on the Atomic Shrimp website, you'll find a template for a star-shaped box and for a hexagonal box. But again, feel free to experiment. This material is cheap. You can try your own designs. There's obviously no reason also to limit yourself to boxes. You could use this technique to make decorative panels for the front of books, picture frames, anything you can imagine really. Anything where you think an embossed metal design might look good. Next question, why did my metal split or tear? This is a tricky one and I think that possibly the metal that cans are made of varies from country to country because I've had a lot of people from the United States say that they had no success at all in trying to crease the cans. The other thing I think might be happening is perhaps that people are using a too sharp an implement or perhaps just using a little bit too much force. So again, I think it's worth experimenting with your fold lines before you commit to the first box you make. See, I've managed to fold there without splitting but that does work hard on this material and if I try and straighten that out now it will just snap. So you only get one go at any particular fold. One other possibility I think maybe it depends what kind of material you use as a backing. I like to use a cork board. Now this cork board's got just a little bit of give but it's quite firm so the lines it permits you to emboss in the metal are of a finite depth and perhaps that's helping me out. I have also tried in the past using wads of newspaper to back the metal when I do the embossing and I did find I think that it splits a little bit more readily when I do that so practice your folds before you do all the decorative stuff on your box because you don't want to waste time making a really nice box and then finding it fails at the last minute so practice your folds first. Last question what happens if you use a steel can? Well I genuinely don't know but here's a steel can I've got as you can see the magnet sticking to it I genuinely don't know what happens if you use a steel can because I've never tried. So let's find out right now. Well, for a start, I can tell you it's very much more difficult to cut. Okay, you can see at a glance we're dealing with a different material here. The steel can is much more shiny on the inside than the aluminium one. I've never tried embossing a steel can, so let's see what happens when we try. Well, the fold seems to work okay. And in fact, it's folded back again. So maybe a steel can is better than an aluminium one. Maybe it's a bit more forgiving a material. That surprises me. Okay, let's also try an embossed design on a steel can. Okay, well that seems to have actually worked, so I'm surprised. I've been telling people all along to use aluminium cans, and it might well be that steel is in fact a better material than aluminium for this. It will of course rust if, you, if it's abraded, so you might have to look after it a bit better than you would an aluminium can, but it looks like steel may be an easier material to work with than aluminium in this context. 
because if nothing else the folds seem to work a bit better. So let's just finish off that spiral again and we'll see what we end up with. Well that's not bad at all. Let's compare that with a... Yeah I think interestingly enough I'm going to have to take back everything I've ever said about using a steel can. I think it probably is possible to make little boxes out of steel cans. So there we go. So that was frequently asked questions about drink can tin work. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to see more of the same, why not click here to subscribe? Alternatively, click here to visit my channel. Or you could click here to visit the Atomic Shrimp website.